Hello viewers and listeners, welcome to another English session. Today we're going to discuss a very important topic. Our topic today will focus on parts of speech in English language. English language has eight parts of speech, namely nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. Whatever you want to write in English language, you use these parts of speech. For example, if you construct a sentence, you use the parts of speech. If I should say, Fatu is a student, in that sentence I use noun, verbs, and noun. What is the noun in that sentence, Fatu? What is the verb in the sentence, is student also another noun. So whatever you want to say, or whatever you want to write in English language, you must use these parts of speech. Now let us look at them one after the other. We're going to start with nouns. We're going to look at the definition. How do we define a noun? What is a noun? A noun can be defined as a noun is a name given to anything. In other words, a noun is a naming word. We can also say a noun names people, places, animals, things, and ideas. Now consider the following examples for better understanding. Let's look at the examples. Names of people. You have Fatu, Modu, Nurse, President, Driver, Watchman, Teacher, Taylor, etc. These words, they name people. For example, Fatu names a particular person, like when you say, Fatu is my sister, Modu is my brother. The nurse works at the health center, the president lives at the state house. All these are examples of nouns which name people. We also look at names of animals. On the animals, you have the following examples, dog, ant, lizard, bird, sheep, rat, hen, snake, tiger, lion, etc. You can say the dog kills the rat. In that case, you can see dog as a noun, and rat also as a noun. Names of places. Noun also names places. For example, market, hotel, mosque, church, school, village, center. In our local languages, we call them bantaba. So you can see, I am going to the market. You're referring to a place. He's working at the hotel. You refer into the place. My father goes to the mosque every day. You refer into the to a place. So here nouns also names places. Names of things. Nouns also name things. Example: mobile phone is a name of thing. Watch, vehicle, table, spoon, football, chalk, television, etc. All these are nouns which name things. Nouns also name ideas. For example, beauty, honesty, wisdom, trust, democracy, intelligence, kindness, ugliness. All these are examples of nouns. Therefore, we understand that any word that gives a name, we can call it a noun. So we say it, a noun is a name of anything. We move on. Now, look at this exercise for better understanding of noun. Underline the nouns in the following sentences. Let us look at our sentences. Sentence one is, Omar lives in Jabakunda. Underline the nouns in the sentence. Omar lives in Jabakunda. Number two, 
the monkey was seen in the forest. The monkey was seen in the forest. Number three, the children are playing in the football field. Number four, Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. Number five, she pleased to have laptop on the table. Now in these sentences, I want you to underline the nouns. Now try them, you see. Good. Now compare your work to this work. Sentence one, Omar lives in Jabakunda. Here the noun is Omar and Jabakunda. What does Omar name? Omar names a person and Jabakunda names a place. Number two, the monkey was seen in the forest. What are the nouns in this sentence? Here you have two nouns, monkey and forest. What does monkey name? An animal and forest also names a place. Number three, the children are playing in the football field. What are the nouns in this sentence? The nouns are children, which names people. Football field is also a noun, and it names a place. Number four, Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. The nouns in this sentence are Banjul and the Gambia. What does Banjul name? Banjul names a particular place and the Gambia also named a particular country. Example five, she left her laptop on the table. What are the nouns in this sentence? Laptop and a table. What do they name? Laptop names a thing and table also names a thing. So in short, nouns name either people, places, animal, things, or ideas. We move on. Now, we're going to look at types of nouns. The types of nouns are as follow. Common nouns, proper nouns, concrete nouns, abstract nouns, collective nouns, and compound nouns. So each of these nouns will be looked at thoroughly. So we're going to look at what is common nouns, what is proper noun, what is concrete noun, abstract nouns, collective noun, etc. So we move on. Common nouns. What are common nouns? And why do we call them a common noun? These are nouns that name common things. In other words, common nouns are general names given to things of the same kind. Below are examples of common nouns. Let's look at example one, teacher. It's a common noun. It can be used to refer to anybody teaching. We have also boy. It's a common noun. It can be used to refer to any young male child. Police is a common noun. Woman is a common noun. Vegetable, nurse, driver, doctor, carpenter, student, lecturer, etc. All these are common nouns because these are common names given to things of the same kind. Because when we talk of a lecturer, we're referring to anybody who teaches in a tertiary institution. When we talk of student, we're referring to anybody going to school. So here you can see these names are common to everybody. Now, let us try to understand common noun here. So what we're going to do, you're going to have this exercise. What are you going to do? You underline the common nouns in the following sentences. What are the sentences? Good. The teacher is teaching the students. Number two, the boy plays football every evening. Number three, the doctor works at the hospital. Number four, the driver drives carefully. Number five, the lecturer lectures at the university. Now look at these sentences 
and you underline the common nouns in them. We move on. Now compare these answers to yours. Sentence one, the teacher is teaching the students. What are the common nouns? Here you have teacher and students. Sentence two, the boy plays football every evening. The common noun in this sentence is boy. Number three, the doctor works at the hospital. The common noun here is doctor. Number four, the driver drives carefully. The common noun here also is driver. Number five, the lecturer lectures at the university. So the common noun in this sentence is lecturer. So you can see all the underlying words are all common nouns. We move on. We're going to look at another type of noun, which is proper nouns. What are proper nouns? And what is the difference between proper nouns and common nouns we just discussed? Proper nouns are direct opposite to common nouns. Proper nouns name a specific or particular person, place, events, months, etc. Proper nouns are unlike common nouns. As we discussed, common nouns are named given to things of the same kind. Common noun does not belong to anybody. But proper nouns are opposite to them because proper nouns would name a particular person, not a common person, would also name a particular place, not a common place, would also name a particular thing, not a common thing compared to a common noun. Now get the examples here. Person, Modu, Adama, Isatu, Fode. It's unlike common nouns, when you say boy, it's common. It could mean any boy. It could mean Modu, Omar, Aliu, Bab. But when you say Modu, you're referring to Modu only. So the name is proper and is specific to Modu. So the other examples are Adama, Aisatu, Fode, etc. Proper nouns also name particular place. Example, village, towns, countries, and continents in the world. Let's get the example. When you talk of Basse, it's a proper noun. What does it name? A particular town. We talk of Ndungukebe, it's a proper noun. What does it name? A particular village. We talk of Senegal, it's a proper noun, what does it name? A particular country. We talk of Spain, it is also a proper noun. What does it name? A particular country as well. America, of course. So we move on, M month of the year, May, January, April, March. Days of the week, Monday, Wednesday, Sunday, etc. Names of religions, they are also proper nouns. For example, we have Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, and Judaism, etc. So all these examples are proper nouns because they give or they name a specific either person, place, month, day, or religion. We move on. Proper nouns always begins with a capital letter, no matter where it appears in a sentence. In your writing, proper nouns, you should always begin them with a capital letter, irrespective of their position in the sentence. If a proper noun comes at the beginning, at the middle, at the end, anywhere in the sentence, that proper noun must be written in capital letter. Note, you can never write a proper noun with a small letter. Grammatically, it's not correct. 
Look at the examples on the board. Fatu visits America every January. Fatu is a proper noun. Of course, it begins the sentence at the same time it begins with a capital letter. America does not begin the sentence, but it has to begin with a capital letter because it is a proper noun. January didn't begin the sentence, but it has to begin with a capital letter because it is a proper noun. We look at example two. The two main religions in the Gambia are Islam and Christianity. The proper nouns in this sentence are Gambia, of course it begins with a capital letter, Islam as a name of religion, and Christianity, also a name of a religion. So all these proper nouns begin with a capital letter. Example three, I want to visit Banjul, the capital of the Gambia. The proper nouns here are Banjul and Gambia. So if you look at them, Banjul begins with a capital letter, even though it doesn't start the sentence, Gambia begins with a capital letter, even though it does not begin the sentence. So this tells you that proper noun always begins with a capital letter. Number four, Friday is a holiday in Islam. What are the proper noun Friday, of course? Because we discussed that name of the days are treated as proper nouns. Therefore, it begins with a capital letter. We also have Islam as a name of religion, and we discussed that proper nouns include the names of religions. Number five, in Christianity, Sunday is a holy day. The same thing applies. The proper noun here is Christianity. Didn't begin the sentence, yet it starts with a capital letter because it is a proper noun. Likewise, Sunday is a proper noun and also begins with a capital letter. So in writing, wherever you write proper nouns, always begin them with capital letter. It would be completely wrong to write a proper noun with a small letter. For example, you cannot say Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. This will be completely wrong because Banjul is a proper noun. And all proper nouns must begin with capital letter. And Gambia is also a proper noun. And all proper nouns must begin with capital letter. Therefore, the correct one would have been like this. Banjul in capital letter. Then you continue. You move on up to here. The Gambia. D. And then Gambia like this. You said Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. So you can see, equally, you cannot say Ali is a good boy. You cannot say that. What do you say? Why? Because Ali is a proper noun. So you don't begin proper nouns with a small letter. Good. So we move on. Now we're going to look at another type of noun. This one is called concrete noun. These are nouns that can be seen and touched physically. When we talk of something concrete, in this aspect, we're referring to something that we can see, we can touch. What we can see here, a board, we can see it. How does it look like? Green, and we can touch it. Equally, we can see this, a duster. Equally, we can also see a chalk. So anything that you can see and touch, we consider it as concrete nouns. Concrete nouns include some proper nouns, common nouns, collective nouns, and some compound nouns as well. Look at the examples here. Mobile phone, laptop, chalkboard, car, bicycle, etc. You can all see a mobile phone. 
and you can touch them because you always carry them. You can also see a laptop, chalk, chalkboard, car, bicycle. You can see all these things. Therefore, concrete nouns refers to any noun that can be seen and touched at the same time. So look at the examples here. The mobile phone rings frequently. The chalkboard is white. The car belongs to Modo. So these concrete nouns, you can always see them. You can see a chalkboard like this. You can see a mobile phone. Equally, you can also see a car. So concrete nouns refers to nouns that we can see and touch physically. Now we're going to look at abstract nouns. Abstract nouns are direct opposite to concrete nouns. What makes it opposite? Because that one you can see and touch, but this one you cannot see and touch. Abstract nouns, as the name imp implies, these are nouns that cannot be seen and touched physically. This is because abstract nouns exist only through imagination. Therefore, we only see them in our mind's eyes. And we can also feel some of them. For example, hunger is an abstract noun that you can feel, but actually you cannot see it and you cannot touch it. If I should ask you to describe a hunger, you wouldn't. If I should ask you also to touch hunger, you wouldn't. They are unlike concrete nouns. If it was a concrete noun, I said chalkboard, touch the chalkboard, you can simply do this. But abstract nouns, you cannot do that because they only exist through imagination. You can feel them, but you cannot touch them. Freedom, love, advice, faith, madness, beauty. All these nouns, you cannot touch them. Physically, no. Equally, you cannot also see them. You talk of freedom. How does it look alike? You talk of advice. You talk of faith. You talk of madness, beauty. But, of course, you can feel them, some of them. Just look at the example. He was given absolute freedom, of course. But can you see the freedom? The advice he gave us was beneficial to us. You need to exercise maximum faith in this trying moment. We move on. We're going to look at another type of noun, which is collective nouns. As the name implies, collective nouns name people or things in group. In other words, collective nouns refer to a group of people or things in a specific way. They always refer to people, animals, place, things. Now, the collective noun here names things in group, in their collection. It does not name individual. Collective noun is unlike proper noun, which names a particular person. But this one names people in group. Let's look at the example. Class of students. When you talk of a class, it's more than one student. One student alone cannot constitute a class. Staff of teachers. When you talk of staff, we refer to more than one employee. So therefore we say, our school has enough teachers, meaning our schools is staffed with enough teachers. So one person alone cannot make of a staff. Therefore, you cannot say, my father is a staff of Narek. But you can say, my father is a member of staff at Narek. Army of soldiers. One, um, one soldier cannot constitute an army. What do we say? Army means a group of soldiers. Army means a group of soldiers. Therefore, you don't say, my brother is an army. You say, my brother is a soldier. Because your brother alone cannot make up an army. So we have troop of singers, gang of criminals, choir of singers, panel of judges, party committee. So when you talk of committee, it consists of more than one person. So one person alone cannot form up a committee. So we look at this. Animals. We have a colony of bees, a pack of dogs, a pack of wolves, an army of ants, a pride of lions, a herd of cattle, a poultry of chickens, 
a group of monkeys. We also have this place, suite of rooms, cluster of villages, continent, forest, etc. We move on, things, a galaxy of stars, a fleet of cars, a set of tools, a bunch of bananas, a bunch of keys, a range of mountains, a string of beads, a deck of cards. Now, underline the collective nouns here. The crowd sounds like a herd of elephant. The staff include professionals and non-professionals. The group of students is standing in line. A bunch of keys was found in the office. The boy was missing in the forest. Good. So in this exercise, the collective nouns are the crowd sounds like a heart of elephant. You have crowd and heart of elephant. Number two, the staff include professionals and non-professionals. So you can see you have the collective noun here as staff. The group of students is standing in line. Here, the collective noun here is group. A bunch of keys was found in the office. The collective noun here is a bunch of. And number five, the boy was missing in the forest. Now, compound nouns. These are nouns that consist of two or more words to form a single noun. One word alone, or one noun alone, cannot form a compound noun. But two words can be used to form a compound noun. So we look at this. Some compound nouns are joined or close. Others are separate words while some are hyphenated. Example, compound nouns that are joined, you can get the word like classroom. Classroom is one word. You cannot write class like this. You write, you write room here. It will not be correct. What do you do? You write this classroom, one word. You also have football. You cannot write food like this. You write ball here. What do you do? You write this football in one word. So chairperson, you cannot also write like this. You cannot write this chair, you write person here. What do you do? You put them in one word, chairperson. Okay, so these words, you don't separate them. You have policeman, headmaster, latecomer, landlord, timetable, etc. You still can continue. You look at all this bathroom, password, bedtime, flashback. All these are examples of compound words that are always joined. Now, the hyphenated words, some other compound words. You cannot join them. Examples of these are mother-in-law, by-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law. We move on. Separate words, head girl, staff room, house fly, etc. Good. Note, all the nouns discussed can be classified as either countable or uncountable nouns. Now get ready to learn the difference between countable and uncountable nouns. Countable nouns, these are nouns that we can count and put them in numbers. Countable nouns can occur in both singular and plural form, with determinants like a and etc. For example, bike, car, school, chair, envelope. Because it is a countable noun, you can say a bike, you can say a car, you can say a school, a chair, or an envelope. You can also say Bikes, cars, schools, chairs, etc. So look at the example. There is a bike in the garage. There are six bikes in the garage. My uncle bought a car. My uncle bought many cars. As you can see, countable noun can occur in both singular and plural. That's why you have bike, bikes. They can also take determinants like a and an. Thus, you have a bike or you have an envelope. We move on. Uncountable nouns are the opposite of countable nouns. These are nouns that we cannot count without using 
units of measurement, such as liter of, kilo of, etc. But a thief such as a piece of, or determiner such as some little or a little can also be used with uncountable nouns. For example, water. You cannot count water. You don't say waters or a water. You don't say I need a water. All right? What do you say? I need some water. Okay? Um, equally, cement. You, say, you don't say cement, but you can say five bags of cement. Not five bags of cement, because cement itself is uncountable noun. A piece of advice, you don't say advices. You don't say he gave us advices. He gave us a piece of advice. A loaf of bread, you cannot say bread. You don't say, I want to buy five breads with S. Bread cannot take S because it is uncountable nouns. It doesn't occur in plural form. You can say loaves of bread, but not a loaf of bread. A piece of information, you don't say informations with S. Information cannot take S. For example, you cannot write this. You add S, no, it doesn't take S. The S is not there. Equally, you cannot also say an information because it is uncountable noun. They don't take articles. Um, they, they will not also take S, so, so plural form. So we move on. We have a piece of chalk. Chalk is always chalk. You don't say chalks. Um, chalk. Bring two pieces of chalk, not chalks. You cannot bring the S there. So we move on. Good. Summary. Nouns are naming words. Nouns name people, places, animals, things, and ideas. The types of nouns are common nouns, proper nouns, concrete nouns, abstract nouns, collective nouns, and compound nouns. Common nouns are general names given to things of the same kind. Proper nouns name a specific, particular person, place, event, month. Concrete nouns are nouns that can be seen and taught physically. Abstract nouns, as the name implies, these are nouns that, we, that cannot be seen and taught physically. Collective nouns refer to a group of people or things in a specific way. Compound nouns consist two or more words to form a single noun. Now, let's do this class exercise. Identify the common and proper nouns in the following sentences. Mr. Njai called the boy. The girl watered the garden. Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. The principal didn't come to school. Senegal is among the West African countries. These sentences identify the common nouns and the proper nouns in them. Now we move on. Good. Now compare these answers to yours. The words in red color are proper nouns, while the, the ones in blue color are common nouns. So Mr. Njai called the boy. The proper noun here is Mr. Njai. And the common noun here is boy. The girl watered the garden. Here you have two common nouns, girl and garden. Banjul is the capital of the Gambia. You have two proper nouns, Banjul and the Gambia. The principal didn't come to school. You have two common noun, principal, and school. Senegal is among the West African countries. Two proper nouns, Senegal and West Africa. Now we move on. Identify concrete and abstract nouns in the following sentences. The network was fluctuating. Democracy is the best system of government. The holiday was just sought. I saw beauty in her face. Freedom cannot be achieved. Good. Now compare these answers to yours. The words in red color are abstract nouns, while the ones in blue color are concrete nouns. So you can see the network was fluctuating. The abstract noun here is network, because you cannot see network. Um, democracy is the best system of government. So here, the abstract nouns are democracy and government, because we always talk of democracy, democracy, but we cannot see it. How does it look alike? So the computer is new. Computer is concrete because you can see and touch. I saw beauty in her face. Beauty is abstract and face is concrete. Because you can see, you can touch the face. Freedom cannot be achieved. 
Freedom, of course, is abstract nouns. It cannot be seen. Now, take this assignment. Identify the nouns in the following sentences. I watched the film in my television. Uncle Omar bought a brand new car. The teacher gave us homework to do. The knife is blunt. The president lives at the state house. The car hit the dog on the road. She always wears expensive clothes. The two brothers help each other. Sambakala is a village in Nyumi. Farafenya is the biggest town in North Bank region. So that's it for today. Work on your assignment before our next lesson. I wish all of you all the best. And of course, I'll always advise you, stay at home, don't go out, focus on your education, read your lessons at home, avoid gathering, always wash your hand with soap. Thank you very much.